What is going on here YouTube and welcome back to another comic book video. This is the channel where we sit down and cover different comic book stories from Marvel, DC, and even IDW as well. Now today we're going to cover the second half of Camelot Fallen. Honestly, this second story is just an okay book. I mean, it does show Superman learning a valuable lesson, but this story that had two volumes was just really okay. But I want to see what you guys think of Camelot Fallen. This is volume two, so make sure you go back and watch volume one video to get a better idea of what this story is all about. If you like today's comic book story, please leave me a like down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I do hope you enjoy today's video. So with the second half of Camelot Fallen, it opens up with telling us where Subject 17 has been at. Because remember, in our last video in the middle of the story, when Superman was fighting against him, he disappeared thanks to Arion. Remember, Subject 17 was this creature that crashed on Earth years ago, but a bunch of men kept him locked up and tested on him for years until of course Carolyn, who was Superman's old love interest, found him. Long story short, after Arion had teleported him away, he has been traveling around the world learning more about humans because the only humans he knows about was the ones who tested on him. But picking back up with Superman, we see him hanging out with Lois Lane, Jimmy Olsen, and Perry White, where these four were the ones who heard what Arion said about a future where mankind dies, all because of Superman. Since Superman and the other heroes keep saving mankind, humanity slowly loses the ability to strive for greater things. And with the heroes always defeating evil over and over again, that sooner or later something so evil and powerful is going to end the world because the heroes kept saving humanity and not letting humanity strive to be greater. And we see that Jimmy Olsen and Perry White have different opinions on this possible future. And so you have Superman go visit Zatanna, who is a well-known person in the magic community and a close friend to a lot of the Justice League members. But you have Superman go to her to ask about Arion since he is technically a magic user. The thing is that the Arion that Superman had met died a long time ago, but there has been an Arion in the current time of DC Comics. And so the question is now, who is the Arion that is alive now in the current time? But you have Superman ask her a few more questions about magic to help him fight against the Arion, the one he met. Now he goes to see Khaled, who is also known as Sirico, but we first met him in the future that Arion told Superman about, who has close ties with the villain Kyber, the one that kills off mankind in the future. And so Superman wants to know if Khaled knows where he can find Kyber and hopefully stop Kyber before the future comes to exist. Now, Superman asked him about how Khaled gained his powers, which was a byproduct of Kyber really. But Sirico does not want to admit that, and so he makes up some lie to tell Superman. But when they do get on the Kyber subject, that's when things get very interesting. Because Sirico, aka Khaled, tells Superman that he has been dead for a while. Now he says he was the one that killed off Kyber for revenge for killing his loved ones. And so right now, in his current time, there is no Kyber, and that is very interesting. Now you have Superman fly around to think more about what he learned from Zatanna, Perry White, and Khaled because he still has doubts that the future Arion is talking about could happen. Except while he is thinking about that, you have Lois Lane contact him through his super hearing to come back to Metropolis because there are a bunch of children flying around. Now, before we can learn more about the children, we actually jump over to Arion 
that Zatanna knows about, the one who has been running around the current time of DC Comics, where we see him at the Oblivion Bar. But while he is leaving the bar, he is confronted with the real Orion. And this is where we learn that the fake Orion real name is William Knightley. And back in Infinity Crisis, he and a bunch of magic users teamed up except he used the name Arion to gain respect from the other magic users. But he was caught by the real Arion to figure out why this man was using his name. Now getting back over to Superman, we see him trying to catch these children who are flying around Metropolis. This is where we learn that these children are from New Genesis, the home of the new gods. And so these children are running around Metropolis causing havoc because they are having fun. Now this may seem kind of random to see, but this does play into the overarching story. And so you have Superman go and catch all of these children. After Superman was able to catch all of the children, that is when he is greeted by Light Ray, another new god, where you have him explaining that he and the children of the new gods were on a field trip around this galaxy except something made the children come to Metropolis. That is when we see that it was Arion who did that to the new gods to show how powerful he is. But we see that he is watching over Superman and Lightway having their conversation to figure out what is going on. But we see that the real Orion has kidnapped William Knightley to ask him why he has been going around the world pretending to be him. Where of course he tells Orion everything that I have already stated. Except he tells Orion in us how Orion died, where he was killed by Mordru, or his soul was taken by Mordru. Long story short, that is how he died which gave room for William to become the new Orion. But getting back to Superman, you have him still talking to Light Ray, where you have Light Ray tell Superman that his friends will grab all of the children who are running around Metropolis. And he can also sense that something is on Superman's mind. And so you have him tell Superman to take the evening off and let some of the older new gods watch over Metropolis for Superman. Now Superman does go see the two ladies who usually gives him great advice. The first one being Lana Lang, his first love. But she tells him that Earth is his home, even though he is an alien. Arion told him that he does not belong here on Earth because of that factor. He then goes sees his wife, Lois Lane, and Lois Lane tells him the same thing that Lana Lane told him, that Earth is his home even though he is an alien. But while being out with Lois Lane, he does hear something and he flies off to see that problem. Which is a young girl falling off her balcony. And of course, she has to be saved, which of course she is saved by Superman and given back to her mother. But this is important because Arion wants Superman to let millions die so man can strive for greatness to have a future. But he lets that young girl die, it would have brought so much pain to her family. And so you have Superman go and meet up with Arion, where Arion asks Superman, what is his final choice? Keep being Superman and let the world die or stop being Superman to hope the world will survive. Where of course, Superman tells Arion no. And Arion did not like that answer. Now we also get another villain, but he is thrown in for a new reason. And it is the prankster. His name tells you what he's all about, which is to play pranks on Superman. That is really it. And he is watching the fight between Superman and Arion. But getting back over to the fight, we see Superman is trying to fight the mind control spell that Arion has put on him. Thankfully for Superman, he was taught by Zatanna on how to fight a spell like that. And so Superman is doing what she told him to do and it seems like he is able to fight his way through the spell. Except we get our first appearance of something new in Superman comics. 
we get our first appearance of Squad K, and this was a government squad that was put together just in case Superman had to be put down. Now we see Squad K in later comics going after other characters who are Kryptonian, like Supergirl for example, but for right now, they were sent in because they saw the battle between Orion and Superman. Also, they saw that Superman is trying to fight the mind control that Orion was trying to put on him. Now, Superman is trying to tell them that he is not under Orion's control, but of course, they are not listening. And so he flies away to protect the innocent people who were there at the scene. But while he is flying away, we see that Superman gets hit with a pie. Of course, this pie was a prank made by the prankster to shock Superman. But after dealing with the pie, Superman sees that the Justice League was also called in because they were afraid of the fact that he was mind control. And so you have him show that he is not being mind control anymore and the fact that he is back in control. But he must leave them behind to find Ariane. Now after the battle, you have Superman tell us that he lost Orion, but now he uses his supervision to see the damage from his battle. Also sees that the Justice League is trying to do some cleanup, but also sees that Batman is working on a new kryptonite ring to take down Superman if he has to. Also take care of the prankster robot that threw that pie at him earlier. But you have Superman go and talk to the leader of Squad K, which is Percy Hazard, where you have him tell Superman that the reason why Squad K was put together is just in case Superman does go crazy and has to be put down before he does real damage to the world, where Superman understands and leaves because his main goal is to find Arion because now Arion is trying to have the whole world look at him as someone dangerous to have around on on earth now there is a time jump where we see superman fighting some gooey monsters with zatanna now this of course is arion's doing here with him showing the fact that if superman and the other heroes keep fighting for mankind a more powerful dark being will kill off mankind and these monsters are black and to represent the darkness to come in the near future that is when Zatanna tells Superman that Arion has turned humans into these creatures. And so you have Zatanna and Superman work together to help turn these humans back to normal. But you didn't have the Phantom Stranger appear to give Superman some bad news. Is that basically he can't find Arion at all, which Superman was hoping he could find Arion for him. But we do get a couple pages where we see that the world is not falling for what Orion is trying to do, which is to make the world look at Superman differently and that if he does not stop being Superman, it will lead to the end of the world, except the world does not believe it. Now, the second page is more of on the lane who's in charge of LexCorp at the moment talking to her board about some new kind of cameras that can broadcast all over the world. And these cameras are going to be used to record Superman's final fight with Arion down the road. Now we pick up with Superman thinking about everything, but also having a hard time finding Arion, where you have him be confronted by Subject 17. This is the first time that they have met since their last battle, where Superman realized that he is now using his psychic powers to gain the ability to speak to Superman normally, where you have him tell Superman that he knows where he can find Arion, except he is not going to tell Superman where Arion is at. And the reason why is because Subject 17 believes that what Arion is stating is that if Superman continues to be Superman, it will lead to the end of the world. And then it will make him very happy because humans kept him locked up for years and tested on him for a long period of time. If Superman wants to know where to fight Arion, well, he is going to have to fight him and beat it out of him. And if he does, it will make Superman just like the humans. And so this leads to a battle between the two of them. But of course, you have Superman be able to beat down on Subject 17 to have him tell him where he can find Arion. After he does that, 
you have Superman show compassion as a way to say that not everyone on this planet is evil. Now you have Superman go to the location of where Arion is at, which of course is an old Atlantean outpost that no one knows about. Except when Superman gets there, he runs into a force field that blocks him out of the place. Except Superman does something that Arion did not expect, which was making a whirlpool that when it collapses, the whole weight of the Atlantic Ocean falls on top of the force field, which of course breaks it open and this leads into the final battle between Superman and Arion. Now the story jumps to a point that took place before Superman fought against Arion, where he met up with the Phantom Stranger, where they have this discussion about the future that Arion is talking about. When you have the Phantom Stranger tell Superman that this could be the future, but at the same time, it is not. Only because the heroes have seen so many futures. For example, Superman traveled into the future where he teamed up with the Legion of Heroes. How would that future happen if the world is gone? And so you have the Phantom Stranger tell Superman that he just needs to be aware that anything is possible. Now honestly, I could sit down and break down the fight because most of the book is really Superman fighting against Arion, where Arion does all these different magic tricks to throw at Superman. Where of course, thanks to Superman working with Zatanna and also getting a gift from the Phantom Stranger, that Superman is able to take down Arion at the end of the fight, which according it seems like Superman was able to capture Arion. Except we learn that this is not the real Arion, that this is William Knightley. See, what happened was, the very last second, Arion was able to use some kind of spell to make it seem like William Knightley looked like him. And so when Superman gives William Knightley over to the authorities to lock him up, everyone thinks it is the Arion from the past. But in reality, the real Arion escaped back to his own time in the past. But there is still one thing left to point out in this story. You see, at the end of the book, we see that Kyber has awakened from his slumber. The guy who we were told that in the future will kill off mankind. Let me just say this now. No, he doesn't. I looked him up to see that maybe there was a story out there where he is the main bad guy in some epic book. The dude pops up like three more times and one of them is only a flashback. And so that is it for Camelot Fallen, and it teaches Superman that the future is not always set, that no one truly knows the future. And this is where I'm going to end today's video. So guys, please leave me a like down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But guys, I'm out of here and I will see you on the next comic book video. Later, guys.